release towards the tail end of PS2's lifespan, Final Fantasy XII is a masterpiece in JRPG design that holds up beautifully in its remaster. We've seen the PS4 and Pro releases of Final Fantasy XII The Zodiac Age running at higher resolutions and with improved effects, but today there are two further updated versions with even more to offer. For one, developer Virtua Studios puts a Switch version in our hands, making it the first time this game's been playable on a handheld. And as another first, Final Fantasy XII arrives on Xbox One systems, where the X enhanced support allows for full 60fps gameplay. So how does this all stack up in comparison, and are these two versions now the best ways to play on console? First, a little detour. A few weeks back we of course had Final Fantasy X and X2 release on Switch and Xbox One as well. It adds a little context to the technical achievements of 12, and so it's worth touching on how each version runs here. So the resolution sides are worth touching on right away, because as the first Final Fantasy on PS2, it's not as technically demanding as 12 is, and so you kind of hope for the best in terms of the image quality given with two generations on now. So right up front, all versions run at 30fps with VSync engaged, and there are only a very, very rare handful of drops from that. I've seen maybe one or two stutters on Switch in boss battles, but besides that, it's been really strong. Now, obviously, there's much more to play into this game, but with that said, let's look at what the game is achieving right now. So on Xbox One, resolution-wise, we're getting a native 1920 by 1080 Meanwhile, if we move over to the Xbox One X, you're quadrupling the pixel count to 3840 by 2160. Now in terms of visual differences between these two, it's actually only down to the ambient occlusion quality which is a bit more subtle on the X model, potentially it's a higher quality, more refined version, it's certainly not as overt. Now the Switch version plays it very straight in terms of the resolutions as well, in that there's no upscaling whatsoever. You're getting in docked play, under the TV, a full 1920 by 1080 but if we switch over to the portable mode, which is captured directly from the unit itself, we have a native 1280 by 720 picture. Again, the main difference between Switch and, say, Xbox One is there's a variance in ambient occlusion qualities, so the method of shading around characters is a little different, but not substantially so. There's also a difference in texture work across the game, which does affect the appearance of some objects and some materials, but it's not a wholesale change. In fact, most of the textures you'll see are a match between all platforms. But besides that, the Switch version holds up really well. So with that in mind, let's look at Final Fantasy XII, a far more ambitious game on many fronts. They ditched the uh, mixture of pre-rendered and 3D backgrounds for an all-in approach with 3D. So the opening area of Rabinastra is fully explorable in 3D with the camera controls letting you freely look around. Certainly is a breath of fresh air coming from Final Fantasy X where the camera angles were choreographed to a set route as you walked around. Here it felt like you were given absolute freedom. Now it's worth stressing the Xbox One and Switch versions here have a few upgrades over the existing PS4 version. Mainly there in terms of the mechanics. So you get the ability to reassign jobs mid-game and also you get the ability to unload 3 Gambit presets per character, which comes in handy later on. And supposing you get far enough into the game, you can also keep all your items in a new Game Plus playthrough. So that's all new to just Switch and Xbox One, but these do include all the Zodiac Age enhancements we already had on PS4, including the upgraded texture filtering and upgraded lighting and the treatment to the original assets. And of course, the game includes that two times and four times fast forward option as usual, two language tracks and the three versions of the soundtrack. So amazingly, they have fit all that onto the Switch version, despite the smaller cartridge size, which we'll get onto in a second. So today, Switch and Xbox One are the most up-to-date ways to play, and there's no sign as of yet that these are being retrofitted on PS4 or Pro, though that may change in future. The most fascinating part of this is perhaps the Switch version, because obviously developer Virtuous has a history of porting games to the console, and in the process of converting the game, the install size for Switch is 12GB as compared to the 26GB on Xbox One consoles. That's still certainly an increase over the 3-4GB of the PS2 original, and that's likely down to the availability of higher quality voice tracks, 
and the ability to switch between the English and Japanese voiceovers as well, plus FMVs being much higher quality, supporting 1080p when docked, will have bumped up the overall install size. Speaking on the image quality side of things, the Switch version of Final Fantasy XII isn't quite up to the standard of Final Fantasy X, so every single way you can play basically drops the resolution to 80% on each axis of whatever the max target resolution is. So for example, while you're playing docked under a TV, it's going to be 1536 by 864. So 864p, meaning you're going to get an upscale to a full 1080p set. Um, it's a bit of a shame, but actually there's enough pixel density there and backed by the what appears to be a post-process AA, it's still a great looking game. Now the same logic applies to the portable play. So taking direct capture from a Switch while running portably, you're getting 1024 by 576 that's 80% again on each axis from 720p. You'll notice it's not a native resolution game, it's lacking that sort of pinpoint sharpness you might expect. It just has this very smooth appearance. I'd put this down as a huge achievement for Switch, given the next rung up really is the base Xbox One. So Xbox One actually retains the 1920x1080 image quality of Final Fantasy X, but if we move over to the Xbox One X model, there is a surprise here, because it turns out this version, despite the enhanced support, actually still runs at 1920x1080. So there's absolutely no difference in image quality between the Xbox One and X models here. Again, ambient occlusion is upgraded on X here, and the texture filtering potentially is better as well, but in terms of the texture quality, they're an absolute match. On the topic of texture work, actually, it turns out the Switch version is the only one to be culled in terms of the overall asset quality. So if we show the two extremes, so we've got the Switch version on top here and the Xbox One X version on bottom, you're getting high quality textures for objects and building sides, though ground textures and character clothing materials are mostly the same. So it's only specific objects that are affected with the Switch version. And of course, texture filtering is also much, much better on the Xbox One platforms. It's really to Switch's credit that it comes so close to the maxed out experience on Xbox One X. And surprisingly, even the other settings like the NPC fade-in, the draw distance on characters as you walk across Rabinastra, they're very similar all round. Certainly anecdotally, I've seen pop-in and fade-in on both machines and there's not exactly a huge attempt to push that further afield on Xbox One X or Xbox One. Okay, so with all that said, there's something very strange going on with the X resolution there. Switching over to the PS4 Pro version today, we still have a much higher resolution there. We're running at 1440p at 30fps on the latest patch 1.07, and of course if you switch it to the 1080p output mode on the console, you can just get a native 1920x1080. So really, if you want the best looking console version, it's the PS4 Pro version you should go for. Though obviously you're missing out on the extra features and the mechanics this latest updated version has. But with all that said, there is a reason Xbox One X has that drop in image quality, and that is down to performance. So let's cut straight to it. As you might have seen in the comparison shots, Xbox One X runs at a full 60 FPS pretty much perfectly from the first two hours of play I've tested. And the fact is, no other console version can do this. So far, this way to play the game has been the preserve of PC users, and I've got to say, it makes a huge difference to the game. It's not exactly necessary for the combat, it's not fully real-time, you still have to wait for that ATB bar to finish, and for the most part, once you get to the end of the game, as uh, Final Fantasy XII players will know, you're pretty much programming the characters to automate their attacks and strategies. So really, 60fps isn't necessarily going to improve your performance in combat, but what it does do is make the whole experience of exploring these huge, beautiful environments at a smooth frame rate, and switching to and from that makes the difference very stark. I jumped into the base Xbox One version right after, as we're seeing right now, and yeah, obviously running at 30fps by comparison is hugely missed. Now, an opportunity was missed with the X version, I think, because it could have run at a similar 30fps and maybe targeted a 4K resolution, maybe 1800p would have done it as an optional mode for those who wanted to emphasize image quality. But as it stands, you're getting the same uh, overall picture as the base Xbox One, but at double the refresh. 
still, that's how it works out. If you want the best performing version on console, Xbox One X, best looking version, PS4 Pro. Now, what about the Switch versions? Well, again here, we've got 30 FPS pretty much locked from what I've played so far. Again, it's only the first two hours of play and the scope for far more ally characters and more spectacular enemies and environments to emerge as we go 20 to 30 hours into the game. But as a dipping of the toe here, I can at least say that the target resolution of 30 FPS is well held. I'll be playing a lot of this version, so if there's anything more to report, I will be back. But for now, the outlook is really good. That is docked play, but if we move over to the portable side of things, again it's 30 FPS and it's pretty much performing the same as a base Xbox One in this sense. So my overall takeaway is this, really I went in hoping the Switch version would deliver the ultimate definitive experience whether that's docked or portable, obviously there's a degradation in the image quality, certainly in terms of running at a cut down 1536x864 res, but actually putting them side by side I don't notice a huge amount of difference, it's actually still a beautiful looking game on a 1080p set. And given that the pop-in and the quality of the shadows and much more are kind of similar, it actually holds up pretty well. The only egregious downgrade on Switch really is that some textures look pretty low res overall and the texture filtering doesn't really flatter it. But if you can get over that, I really think this is the version to go for. Obviously, 60fps, you know where to go. But if you want kind of an all-in-one, Switch really holds up pretty well in my experience. Still, at least based on the first few hours, that's all I have for today. If you did find this analysis useful or insightful in any way, please do give us a like or subscribe to support what we do at Digital Foundry. And as ever, hit the bell to get notifications as any video lands. Also, you can get this video on our Patreon at digitalfoundry.net and to get in touch with me or the team, just use Twitter. But from me for now, thanks for watching.